If ours seems generally bleak, I think his was perhaps an open question. Oppen was not a poet of the future, certainly not in our major American sense, the Whitmanian one, but I think he was profoundly interested in what you could call social reproduction. And I think we can learn from that. The word future doesn't appear all that many times in the new collected poems, but I'd like to begin with a telling and very moving usage from this in which, and this will be the first of, I guess, several times, maybe a dozen times where I move away from the podium and mess around my laptop a little bit. Um, so that's gonna happen now. Eros, and you too, old man, so we have heard once. An old man's head bulging and worn almost into death. The head grows from within and is eroded. Yet they come here to the old among the visitors, suffering the rain here above Paris, to the plaque of the 10,000 last men of the commune shot at that wall. In the cemetery of Père Lachaise, and the grave of Largo Caballero, and the monuments to the resistance, a devoutness toward the future, recorded in this city which taught my generation art, and the great paved places of the cities. Maze and wealth of heavy ancestry, and the foreign rooms of structures closed by their roofs and complete, a culture mined from the ground. As though the powerful gift of their presence and the great squares void of their dead were the human tongue that will speak. If you spend some time reading Oppen chronologically, as I did in the months leading up to my talk, you'll see that this poem is a delicate weave of motifs that Oppen begins developing in the materials and commits himself to at least through of being numerous. First, the poem begins with a snippet of something that, matter, that matters immensely to Oppen across his career, dialogue. And in this case, the dialogue hints at another idea that I think is crucial for Oppen and will be at the center of my talk, the intermingling of the old and the young, the intermingling of the old and the new. In Eros, this takes the form of young people telling an old man that they've heard that he too was once part of a militant movement. I think that's very strongly the connotative context for those opening lines. But the commingling isn't just meant to signal intergenerational concourse. It is also a small figure for the blending of the momentary and the perpetual, as when, in Of Being Numerous, he writes about the flow of New Yorkers through the city. For the people of that flow are new, the old new to age as the young to youth. These are the first lines of Oppen's that ever stuck with me. I was 19 or 20 when I read them, and they seemed like they carried a promise, a promise that there might still be surprises in store in a future that was different than the individual future you imagine when you're young. More than that, though, is the way this simple observation undoes or refuses our most instinctive response to time, which is exactly to narrate it to ourselves as a matter of the individual, linearly, Refusing this instinct is a touchstone for Oppen, and it makes a direct link, of course, to his more famous meditations on numerousness and the shipwreck of the singular. The idea forms the immediate background of Eros in the penultimate section of the poem just before it, the better known, A Language of New York. Oppen writes, strange that the youngest people I know live in the most ancient buildings. You may know as well that those lines are themselves repeated almost verbatim three years later in Of Being Numerous. 